on the basis that these lights are really quite annoyingly shimmery, um, I'm going to put my notepad here just to blank as much of them out as possible, just to save your sanity. Now, these lights were sent in by a chap called Phil, who, on the day of his wedding, was string these out uh, on a hedge and got an electric shock off them. They did indeed try to turn his wedding into a funeral in one go, so that's a good start. And this is a sort of, uh, it's a sort of pretend UK compliant type of string of lights, whereby I'm just being careful what I touch here, given that these have already got a bit of a pedigree. And it comes with this sort of, uh, this sort of attempt at a two-core cable and the square pin plug and strain relief, but it's still using this sort of single-core cable, uh, single insulation cable, but it, it is a wee bit thicker than the other ones. And it's got this strain relief, which it, mainly the strain relief is a visual effect, it's just big holes going through it, but uh, it's got uh, hot melt glue inside it, so I'll let me show you. I'm just uh, going to make sure that plugs out before I do this. I've had this cover open. Yeah, it's just basically skid marks of hot melt glue down there just to actually keep the wires sort of roughly locked in. And what's really odd and slightly annoying about this string is that it is four channel. And if I do a quick doodle here, here's the box, the control box, four channel. And... Just, uh, I just got a strange tapping sensation in my fingers there, so I'm just going to be, I'm just going to keep my feet off the, uh, right, off the cable, off, uh, there's a 500 LEDs, so I've got them all piled at my feet here, and just got an odd sensation, I think this may be having a go at killing me as well at the moment. So, um, this has the four wires coming out, plus the common positive, so that's common positive, and then it's got, say, A, B, C, and D. And the string of, um, 500 lights-ish, is actually divided into three sections. And they've really stretched, they've run as many LEDs as possible. Um, and in this case they've got 168 LEDs approximately in each string. And that's divided into two circuits. So they've got two circuits here, two circuits here, and two circuits here. So that gives approximately uh, 168 divided by 2 is 84, and that gives approximately 84 times roughly about 3-ish. Means it's like way up at the, you know, it's pushing it for the, you know, the mains voltage. So it, it, the resistors, there's five resistors in series each circuit, and they're not really stretched, let's just say. They're really not stretched at all. So what's really annoying about this set is that... Uh, it say uses channel A and B to do this section of the lights, and then all that continues through to the rest of the string here is C and D. And then you get to the next section, I'm just going to put this over here and cautiously pick up the next section. It's just the three wires, because there is nothing else, it is just the three wires looping across. So they've got... Uh, the three wires looping across there, three wires looping across there, so the whole rest of the string is channels C and D. But it gets a bit more exciting at the end, because the last section of the lights is just dead. It's, it's not lit at all. And when you look at the very end of the string, which I'll just pick up over here. When Phil went to take the lights down at the end of the night, it was all looking very sooty and black and burnt. It really is absolutely cremated. Uh, so let's see if we can work out uh, what the wires are in here, what's happened, and uh, we'll uh, see if we can fix this to a degree. And by fix it, I mean let's not really fix it at all because it's a bit of a death trap. So I'm going to unplug this. That's it. Feeling a lot safer now. Uh, so that is very burnt. It, it really has been tracking across inside. And what's really odd here is that they didn't need to bring five wires up to the end in this set. I'm not sure why they did that. All they needed to bring was the three wires, basically the end of these two sections, um, and the common positive wire. So I'm not really sure why they've done that. And if we cut this off now, make sure that the power is off. If I just cut that end LED off, because it is, it really has been burning up in there, and I'm guessing that's because it's seen the full rectified mains voltage cross there. It's been 240 volt RMS DC. Uh, and we can sort out, well there's uh, one channel. Here's the other channel. So of these three remaining wires, 
One is going to be the positive and the other two are going to be the basically these channels, but they start the LED. So if I was just to twist these together now, it'd make a bit of a, a well, I was going to say it would make a bit of a bang. There's a very good chance that because of the length of cable and the unknown fusing, it might just actually make them all smoke and burst into flames or something like that. Which would be exciting in its own right. So let's uh, strip uh, these wires and see if we can find which of them is the positive. So I'll just tuck those ones out the way there. And to find out which is positive, I'm going to use the meter set to continuity. Here's the meter. Set to continuity. Turn it on. And I'm going to now try these wires for continuity to the actual controller itself. So only one of these should show continuity onto the positive. Let's grab the meter leads here. Let's go on to what is actually marked as a positive in here. We'll even put the red lead in it, although it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, so one of these wires should have continuity. It's that one. Look at the resistance of that cable. That is quite a staggering resistance. It's such a high resistance, it's not even showing continuity. What is the resistance of that? The resistance of the cable over the whole run of those lights is about 60 ohms. Which means that if I had just plugged that in, well, let's do the maths. 60 ohms plus uh, uh, these two would also have a resistance, but we'll test that. Let's find out what these two resistance is. So these will be tacked onto one of these channels. Trying to get it in without actually going to the... Oh, I'm not sure which uh, channel they're on. Am I getting a connection here? Because I, I might not be getting a connection. Uh, it is about 60 ohms. So if I had shorted those together, that would have been a combined... Uh, two at 60 ohm in parallel would have been 30 ohm, plus the 60 ohm would have combined up to 90 ohms. Uh, 90 ohms with the 240 volts, I equals V... 240 volts divided by the 90 ohms would have been a current of, it would have been 3 amps, it would have been fine in the sense that it wouldn't really have blown any fuses but 3 amps times 240 volts <laughs> equals it would have dissipated approximately 639 watts along that cable that cable would have been smoking that's an interesting new twist on these lights I didn't know that these are really potentially a short at the end that's possibly why it's just been smoking at the end, smoldering at the end I mean, that's usually the sign of just tracking and arcing inside that that's happened. But uh, it's interesting there's no damage to the cables themselves. Hmm, that's intriguing. So let's uh, go back. Let's find this uh, positive again and cut, cut the other ones off. So that is the positive connection. The other one has no connection. They've got no connection. So I'm just going to mark that one as the positive with a bit of red Sharpie. If I can find a red Sharpie. Have I got red Sharpie? Yes, I've got red Sharpie. So that's a positive. And we'll cut these other two off. Because we don't want them. Because they're just basically coming from the uh, thyristors in this unit. And we'll see if we can get the last section of the strings to light again by combing it with the two sections, the end two sections of the string. And that should actually make these ones light now. Or it might actually just burst into flames after all. Makes mental note. Do I have anything to put this out if it does burst into flames? I'm not really sure I have. <clears throat> Scary. But exciting at the same time. It's such an exciting life. Meddling with things that already have a bit of a history. So if I just twist all these wires together. That should theoretically reincarnate the last section of the string. I could solder them, I could put heat shrink around them, or I could just plug it in right now with them just lying loose on my bench. Is that dangerous? Yes it is. Do I care? No, I don't. Right, and I'll just leave the box open as well, and hopefully it won't slither onto my front when I do this. Yay! It has actually reincarnated the entire last section of that string. Okay. So I've fixed a rather dubious set of lights, but the question is, do I really want to fix this dubious set of lights? Um, no, not really. So yeah, 
Interesting. Now, I get the feeling that Phil's shock was probably from one of the situations that you get this spike of solder sticking through the heat shrink, but it may actually have been from this very cap at the end if it was already struggling to contain the wires. Um, there's a possibility it may already have been split open for maybe water ingress. Uh, that's another pearl of the fact they've got so many cores going into this that it will basically it will help water wick up inside. Uh, let's oh, let's rip this open. In fact, let's explore it. Let's go all the way. It's kind of fused together. It's multiple layers of heat shrink, which are trying to keep the circuits apart. And one of those will have been going up to the end of this. Well, well, two of them will have been going up to the end of the... Three, actually, and two of them will have just been ending, theoretically. In here, so that one is probably one of the ones that was ending. It's all gone crumbly and flaky. It looks as though it was kind of stripped as well, unless it has just been tracking back. Hmm, intriguing... Uh, this is just one matted lump of m molten plastic, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's not very easy to tell what what is connected to where, really, with this. Is that another one ending, or is that connected onto another one? It looks like it's connected onto another one, but it might... Oh, that might have been the two that were ending, but they were really close to each other. Um, not that that would have really mattered, it would have just bridged the two channels together. Uh, this is all a bit uh, indecisive. I'd say this is probably the last LE the wire for the last LED in this circuit, which is coming up to this LED. Uh, and then that would have been the positive, and then the two commons going on to that terminal. But it's just not been sleeved quite right, and uh, it's allowed it to track across, particularly if water got inside. It's it's a fairly common, you know, when water gets inside the mains voltage uh, Christmas light and stuff, it does tend to arc and burn and bubble up and go horrible and black and sort of charred looking. But yes, that was quite interesting. Um, this controller was fairly well glued together. It's the typical arrangement. It's got the mains come in. Um, it goes, uh, no fuse. Oh, wait, no, there is a fuse. There's a wee thin track there which acts as a fuse, which uh, has a solder blob in the middle, so that's probably rated for about 10 amps, I would say, so that's not going to protect the cabling at all. Is there a fuse in the plug? It says, fitted with a 13 amp fuse. Really, seriously, it was just a hiding to nothing, isn't it? The, it's surprising that the whole string didn't go in far. Oh no, it's, uh, it's got a 3 amp fuse, well I say it's got a 3 amp fuse, it's got a fuse with 3 amp written on the side of it, whether it is actually 3 amp is unknown. It's just uh, the two black cores in this sort of, at least it is sort of double insulated as it, you know, it's making an attempt to pretend to be sort of UK compliant. But yeah, the two cores come in, uh, they go up to the bridge rectifier, they get rectified but they don't get smoothed. Then there's two resistors, uh, one of them, uh, probably this one here, no, that that I doubt it is that one. One of the resistors will be for feeding the, the circuitry, and it usually goes to that capacitor. It's this one. So that's a brown, green, yellow, which is 150k, is trickling. As, it's acting as a sort of like a resistive dropper to this uh, little chip here. And uh, that's pretty much going straight to this little power supply capacitor, which says it's rated 16 volts. Not sure what voltage these operate internally at. The... Little chip on board thing says XX803B. I'm not sure why they always do it. Why on that little board like that? You'd think they produce enough that they'd actually put it straight onto the actual circuit board itself. But this other resistor is a reference one. It's it's what it uses to detect the sort of the waveform, the zero crossing point, so it can do the dimming thing. Then you get the button, the input little capacitor across there. I'm not sure. Well, that may be in the button. Or that may just be across the power rails. Or it may be timing, actually. <coughs> and then the output comes to these three, four, should I say, little thyristors, um, which is a common enough approach. It's the easiest and cheapest way to switch the output. And they're PCR606A thyristors, which usually have a super ultra-sensitive input. So the minute current that comes from this is enough to actually turn them on. 
So, interesting, it's just a sheer mass of lights down here, and they do all work now. Oh, I'll just pick them up and I'll show you just how much of a mass it is. It's that much of a mass, and the rest that's on the floor, yeah, this much of a mass. And all oh, just a wee bit dodgy and exciting, so yes, that's, that's good. That was quite fun, actually, I quite like that.